Hey everyone, this is Adrian with Tulsa Game Developers again, and I uh, wanted to go over another tutorial. This one's going to be another basic one, but I think it's a really good one to go over for people who are just starting. Um, so we were talking about last time that we would go deeper into some of these little windows over here and everything. So I'm going to kind of start with one of the most important ones here, which is the content browser. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Um, and uh, so it's just nice to be able to go through that and uh, show what all can be done. So first off, this is, you know, your content examples like package. So everything that you put into the game is pretty much going here in a hierarchy. And so we can actually view that same structure. If I open up a file explorer here and I'll pull this over on the other screen in just a moment. Okay, so in here, we're in the Unreal project, and you can see that we have config, content, derived data cache, intermediate, plugins, save scripts, and so on and so forth. And then you have your project here. Now, all of this stuff is going to be located under the content folder. And so if we go in here, we'll start to see, hey, look, there's our animation folder, there's our collections and characters and all this kind of stuff. And so you can go in and you can start to see all of these. Now, one thing to note is when you import something into Unreal, it's going to be known as a .u asset. Um, and this is an Unreal file type. So um, that's uh, really important to know. <clears throat> and so... Uh, anything we put in here, it'll just kind of update through time in there. And so uh, if we want to bring something in, there's a couple of different ways that we can do it. So the simplest way to do it is to just kind of, you know, find what you're looking for and you can just drag and drop it in. So you can just grab it and then drag it and you'll see you get this little plus sign on your arrow. Sometimes you don't get that, so you just got to wiggle it around sometimes. But you, then once you bring um, a file type in, you'll get a bunch of different options depending on the file type. I imported something called a .fbx, but there's .opj, there's a gltf, there's a lot of different formats that you can bring in, and all of them will have their own separate settings. We'll go over these settings in a little bit, but uh, at some point we'll deep dive into these more and, and talk about this more. And so I'm just going to hit import. And you'll see here, it'll tell us a couple of things, and sometimes some issues can be resolved, and sometimes they're just magical issues that always persist. But as long as you don't get any big red warnings, you'll be able to bring in your models, and you'll be good to go. And so you can, again, just drag that into the scene. And with the W, E, and R key, you can, with R, scale, E, rotate, and then W, translate okay so that is um, a fun method there now d back down in the content browser if you want to import a different way you can just right click in the content browser and you can come up to the top and say import to game and then from there you can just locate what you're looking for so there's a lot of different ways to do that which is really nice another thing is if you start um, like importing a bunch of stuff and you want to put them in folders and start kind of um, <clears throat> organizing things together, you can come in here, right click in the content browser and you can go to new folder. And so you can name the folder accordingly and you can just cl click this and drag it into that folder and it'll give you some options. Move here, copy here or advanced copy here. Um, for the most part, you're usually going to move here, but if you want to copy, you know, and it stay here and then just copy it to a new place. You can do that. And then advanced copy gives you a couple of different options um, to help kind of with uh, something called dependencies, which we'll go over at a later date. So now what we can do is we can um, go over a couple more options here. So you'll see here that we've got all these folders and it's nice, but it also gets a little complicated because you're like, well, I'm looking for a very specific thing, but I don't remember exactly where I put it. So you can see over here where it says search content, there might be um, a little button here that has like three lines going descending down and it's called a filter 
and you can actually put filters in here and you can filter it by pretty much any kind of um, type of asset which is really nice so if I want to look for anything that's just textures I can click that and whatever route that I'm on over here in our outliner for our content browser hierarchy so if I move to something like the map folder there's no textures in there so it doesn't show any textures but if I go back to the content kind of the root of it all it'll show us all the textures that we have in our um, content folder so this is really nice you can then if you're looking for specific things from there and you say oh this is still too much we can say I and now it'll put down everything that has the word I in it so this is a really nice way to do this now on top of that there are other things you can do maybe you're looking for an eye but you're like texture but you're also looking for the eye material and so you can do two filters at the same time and it's really really nice and they're color coded and you just turn you just click them to turn them off and then if you want to go back to your regular view just get rid of whatever's in the search by hitting the x and you'll be back to what you're used to okay now this is all nice and we're importing things in, but um, if we were to close the project down from here, a lot of our stuff isn't gonna be retained or saved. So we need to come up to file and we just need to save. Now we can either save to the current level, we can save the current level as a new level, or we can save all. Now, um, a level is just this area that we're in. It's kind of a map containing whatever information that we put into it. And so I'm just going to come in and say, hey, I'm going to save all. OK, now let's go back to importing things and we'll just go over a couple of simple options, because what you might run into when you go to do this is something a little different. So I'm going to bring this character in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of reset my settings here. <coughs> OK. And now that my settings are reset, if I go to hit import as is, which is the default settings, we're going to get our character in, but you'll notice something. Our character is split into two pieces. So I've just got this head, and then I've got the bottom half which is a little strange, um, especially for something like a character or something like that. Now, you could just grab both of them and drag them in at the same time, and they'll maintain their position stuff, but they'll still be separate pieces. And that's because when this was modeled and done, it was separate pieces. The head was one thing, and then the tentacles were another thing. And so... <coughs> It's going to come in that way. It's going to maintain that data. Now, what we can do instead is I'll go ahead and delete this. And so you can just select everything and hit delete. And it might tell you a couple of things. It might say, hey, there are some references. And you can see that in here it's referencing two things. Um, and we'll go over how you can find how to find what references they're gathering and all this kind of stuff. But for now, I'm just going to say force delete and it's just going to obliterate all references and destroy this. And sometimes that can be very dangerous. So don't always do that. Um, but for this case, we are. And so now I'm going to take this, bring it back in. And we're going to look at a couple of the options here. One of the big options here is something called combined meshes. And if you hover over anything in Unreal for the most part, it'll give you some form of tooltip. And it says here that if enabled, combining all the meshes into a single mesh. So we're going to click that. Another thing that's happening here um, is that maybe we don't want it to create materials and import textures and all that kind of stuff when we bring in the model. Maybe we have some things set up like specific master materials that we want to use material instances with, which we will go over in some point to essentially reduce all the amount of materials and keep things quite simple. So what we can do is we can come down in here into the material section, which you can see each one is allotted a section to help kind of navigate through it. And instead of having it create a new material, I'm gonna hit the drop down here and you can see it says we can create a new material or an instance material, or we can just not create a material. 
Now, if you hit any of those, though, you'll see that we get a couple of things up here that become available. Now, what we're going to do here is I don't want to import any textures. This character doesn't have any, but I just don't want to it for future cases because I might want to import the textures myself. Now, if you want to keep that on and have everything kind of import if it's embedded to the model, absolutely do so. It's uh, very convenient. But for this, I'm just going to turn it off. And for the most part, those are going to be um, some of the major settings. Now, there will be definitely some more that you can go into. And one of the big ones for a lot of people might be the import uniform scale. If you're coming from something like Blender, Maya, ZBrush, you might notice that your scale might be kind of small on some levels. And so you can always either increase or decrease this number. And when it imports in, it will import with that new proper scale so there's a there's definitely a couple of different ways you can rotate your rotation you can change the translation of it so where it is in the world space and all of that kind of stuff but most of the time you want to have that stuff done before you import it in but there is an option there so I'm going to import all now and you'll see what happens is now that we have the combined meshes and do not create materials it's going to bring in the model and the model is going to be as one and there's not going to be any additional materials attached to it and you'll see here that it over here in the detail panel under our material section for our mesh we're going to have two materials that are both the world grid material and this is just a material that's built into unreal and so it's usually the default if nothing comes in this is sometimes nice because now i can kind of just create my materials and i can place them in there and do what i need to and so now we have this model that is one mesh. You can see I cannot move just the head away from the body. So that's very nice. Now, <clears throat> the last thing here is if you ever notice this little star down to the thumbnail of the character, this, is, this means that it hasn't been saved to the content package yet. So you can come up here to file again and you can save all. And you'll notice that once I do that, it goes away. And this means that, hey, this asset has now been saved. Now, the last thing here that we're going to go over is we're going to come up here to the setting tabs in the content browser. You'll notice that some of these windows have a settings tab, a little cog wheel, and that's because they get very specific settings that they can use. Now, the settings, we're not going to go super deep into this um, because there's a lot of stuff outside of um, our traditional content package that we can reference. But we'll go into that at a later date when we start to look for engine content and plugin content. But if you ever run across that kind of stuff, this is where it's going to be. Now, you can actually change the way that the view is being made in the content browser. So instead of having this tile set, we could have something like here, which is a list if you're more comfortable that way, or we can do columns, right? And so there's very cool things here that can um, help you get gather information if you're looking for certain things. We can also lock the content browser. And so when we do this, it'll lock it to the docking bay here. And so now if I go and I click in here, see how it doesn't pop back down. But if I turn that back off and I come in here and let's see, let's hit the content dock in layout and then lock content browser. It doesn't seem to be doing it this time, but essentially what it will do is it will um, ignore like any form of finding. So for example here, but uh, it doesn't seem to be working uh, properly right now. Um, and that's something always good to remember is that um, Unreal Engine, especially Unreal Engine 5, is still in the works. There's still a lot of things that are being you know, ran through, worked through, and uh, new bugs are being found all the time. So it's okay if something doesn't work. It, you know, it's just life. <laughs> now, you can come down to the bottom under here under the thumbnails, and you can actually change the thumbnail size. So if you need to see things a little bigger, you can set it to huge, or if it's too much and you, know, you want something very tiny, um, you can do that too. So there's a lot of really nice things there. Um, but outside of that, I think that's pretty much all we're going to show for um, this section here. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about the content browser, how to import in a model, uh, a few simple import options, and how to save your project. 
So this is Adrian, and uh, we hope that you guys come join us and do some tutorials for the Tulsa Game Developers Community Package. Um, anyone is welcome, and if you need any help or questions or need um, a video made over something, there are requests that you can make, or you can always pitch in. Um, so we look forward to any content that's made by all of us, and uh, have a wonderful day.